Hey guys, this is Fady from Harvey Production Studio and welcome to another video. Today's video, I recently got my hand on the SPL Big, which is a 500 series unit for stereo imaging. And um, I'm just kind of testing it out and uh, giving you guys reviews on what I think about it, what I like, what I don't like. This is not a paid promotion, so they did not send me this unit. So in everything in this video, I'm gonna be giving my pure honest opinion uh, about what I think about it and what it does. So before we go to some samples, we're gonna be A-B-ing some samples and oh, turning it on and then try to hear what it does for a full mix or for some uh, guitars or drums or stuff like that. Um, I wanna just go through the settings so we understand what they do. And then from that, we can take it to uh, a Pro Tool session in here and then we can uh, start listening to it. So you guys can see over here in the video, here's the unit. It's a 500 series, it's a dual unit because it's a stereo unit. Uh, it's actually pretty uh, simple and they called it big, which is funny because it's like a massive big knob, like it's the biggest you can find on a 500 series unit. And then uh, really what you have is at the top here, you got bypass on and off. And then up here, you have the stereo imaging shaping, which the range is basically, you're saying, what are you shaping stereo image wise? Uh, high, you're supposed to be, shaping more on the higher frequencies and the more you go this way the more it goes you're shaping the full range of the entire stereo image it's kind of interesting that like the i just see like the labels are misleading and uh if i read you guys the manual let me pull up the manual in here it's interesting because it it doesn't even say the frequencies it says range is the frequency range which should be processed can be selected. But it doesn't say what are the frequencies and it doesn't say if high is like 16K and then open is, you know, 200 and then this is everything in between. It doesn't make sense. What I know and we're gonna be testing here in a second that high is like more of the high frequency being shaped and this is more of like a fuller range frequency being shaped which you would think that would have been otherwise because you turn right, go more to the high, and you turn left, you go more to the full range. But anyways, stage, um, they're saying uh, this is more like the image just sits further back versus it's more bringing more to the front, which is an interesting because I don't know what are the technology that happens inside of it. Like this is something I do as mid-side EQ, for example. Um, here, according to their explanation, it says it's a stage control, the frequency range previously selected with the range, so right over there, it can be moved forwards or backwards for the stereo image. But again, I still don't know what frequency are being selected, uh, but we'll test it because all what matters at the end of the day, does it sound good or not? If it sounds amazing, then it's amazing. Uh, the next is the bass which bass is on and off, and I've tested this one actually, and I kind of like it. it. It adds more like a, a low-end boost to the bass, especially in the sub-frequencies, uh, and it's pleasant. It's not like, it kind of reminds me of actually this unit right here, which is the West Audio Pultec Stereo EQ. If I go to my low-end and put it down to like 30 or some, somewhere like deep down in the subs, and then turn it up, it gets me that pleasant boost to the low end and it's not annoying me at all, which I really like. Um, so what that does, and then this, they're calling it the bigness, which is the stereo image bigger. Uh, they're calling this knob the bigness, which according to their explanation here, it says the huge bigness control adjusts the intensity of the stereo image shaping. So this is basically all the controls on this and up here you see left and right as it shows you if there's signal passing through it or not. So let's kind of dig into a Pro Tool session in here and then we start A-B-ing it a little bit. So I already have it as a Pro Tool insert. All right, I'm adding it right here to my drum bus. And um, I'm gonna have it bypass right now. So here's kind of where my drums sit right now. So it's a really simple drum beat that we tracked here in the studio using my um, 
CNC kit, uh, and it was a Yamaha snare, and we used uh, hot rods for it. So let's kind of try to, so I'll turn everything here. I'm gonna keep that in the center. I'm gonna keep that all the way to open. And let's kind of turn it on. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead, start playing the drum bus, and let's mess with the settings and listen to the differences of what it's doing. So just to be honest, with the bigness is turned all the way off, I'm not really sure if I'm hearing much of a difference. And I, I don't know if these are supposed to be doing stuff with this being turned off or not. Um, so I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put on my headphones, because I really trust my Sennheisers. And then kind of let's listen with this. So it's just, um, so it's just doing that and not messing with the big knob. I'm not hearing much of a difference. So let's kind of uh, do it again, and then this time let's mess with the big knob and let's see if the big knob does anything different. Okay, there's obviously a lot going on, so let's kind of dissect it one section at a time. Um, first, this knob right here, you can tell when I went to high, it's almost like there's more emphasis on the higher frequencies. It's getting, it's like the mix is getting brighter, and the way for me to explain it, it might not be technical terms, because I'm not sure what the unit is doing. I feel like I'm getting more highs and my lows are like disappearing a little bit. And then as I'm going more this way, uh, I'm getting the full range without that boost in the highs. Um, now, front and back, I don't know if I call this front and back, just to be honest. It does not feel to me that some, something is moving more uh, in my face or moving away from my face. Maybe with, when we add vocals here in a second, it'll be different. But what I feel is on front, I can definitely tell like my snare and overheads on that drum mix is opening wider and it's getting more to the sides versus the mid, uh, especially with headphones because I can um, identify stereo image a little bit clearer here. So let's try that again and just mess with that section. So here is in the middle and then here is uh, full range. So you can see I lost a lot of that low from that kick, some of the low mids as well. Now I'm going to move this back to open.
it's it's also not just the highs. There's also, which I can't fully express it. It's literally like I'm turning my room mic higher and lower. Like this is tighter drums. This more roomier drums, if that makes sense. So there is like roomy drums. And then here's tighter, was a, a little bit of a high boost. You can obviously tell now that I turned it off and on. When it's on, it's like it's much brighter. Let's turn it on and off and put it on the, um, the open side. Pull the uh, the big knob a little bit down so it's not an exaggerated. Kind of like it. I actually really do. It, especially on that setting right now, um, it feels that I'm just the drums are getting open and they're hugging me, and there's no boost of frequencies. I don't like stuff that changes my frequencies because I'm getting my drums to where I would like it to be. If I'm looking for a stereo imager in this unit. I'm not trying to look for something that would boost highs or lows or something like that at this point. Um, let's, let's keep that setting and I'm gonna mess now with the stage front and back. So again, it doesn't feel like front and back. It feels like wider, roomier drums versus a little bit tighter drums uh, and less wide. That's kind of what it sounds like it to me in my ears. And I'm going to do one more test here. Obviously the changes on that one on the stage is less intense and more subtle than the changes on the range one. So let's grab that to a decent sweet spot. Okay, so I'm kind of liking where this is sitting right now, and now I'm gonna add uh, the bass feature on and off, and I'm gonna see what that does to the kick and the uh, floor toms. It's more subtle on the drums than on the bass guitar, which we're going to pull up a bass guitar here in just a second, but I can tell the um, that like boost in that low end, which I actually really like it. It's like a pleasant boost. Let me, uh, let me grab that, put it here on our entire bus, so we have the drums. And then I'm going to also add the bass along, so now I'm running both bass and drums through it. And this bass that I have right now, it's actually a synth bass from the Polydi over here, uh, which is great because it gives us an idea of what that sub frequency is and what that feels like. So here you go, let's uh, play it off first. And then I'm gonna turn it on at the current settings.
So it's a huge difference. I kind of absolutely love it. This is very impressive. What you could do with it, that's, it made the drums and the bass, that bass boost, it's actually was really cool and I really liked it. Let's, um, so let's add some acoustic. Actually, let's just solo the acoustic because I have this finger style acoustic in this song. Oh, let's find the acoustic section. Yeah, here we go. Uh, which is like a picking pattern that is doubled and hard pain left and right. So it already has like a wider stereo image to it. So let's start with the bass off and the unit bypassed. And let's kind of uh, see what that sounds like. So no processing now. So to be honest, I don't like it on the acoustic. So see, that's the thing about units. Um, like you, you, sometimes you get a review, it's like, oh, I tried this unit and I hate it. Um, sometimes certain things works better on certain, like on specific, and doesn't work well on everything. And you, you gotta have to use your ears for all of that. So for the acoustic, because that acoustic is already hard pain left and right and is already wide, when I started to mess with the stereo imaging of it, it started to phase a little bit and sounding weird. The other thing is it started to make that acoustic feels brighter and harsher. Like when that unit is off, that acoustic is super warm. So this one, it didn't only so this one is not, with the acoustic, it's not just messing with the stereo image, but it's actually affecting the guitar tone, which I don't like. Uh, it's, it's doing more tone than I would like it to do. I'm gonna add the bass now, and let's see what would it do with the bass on the acoustic. And I'm even trying to do it on the open versus the high, because the high, it adds more high end. And then let's kinda, maybe we don't need to process it that much. So I'm gonna pull that back down a little bit and kinda try to find a sweet spot here. So I do like it now where we set it, but you guys can see it's like on one. Um, I think the, uh, like this was way too much and it was messing with the acoustic guitar tone. Like I liked this on drums, but I did not like it on the acoustic. It was a little bit too much. Um, let's, um, let's just try piano. So we have here, um, So here's the piano in this section.
So it's kind of similar to the acoustic. You guys can tell it's getting brighter, uh, a little bit more punchier, but more than I would like is a changing tone. It's also bringing the floor noise off the piano up a little bit, which I don't like. It added the more of a s that I don't really like. I don't like stuff that adds more noise. And that's more noticeable on the piano and the acoustic, more on the piano, because the piano has more floor noise in it naturally than the acoustic. Um, all right, let's try put it on the entire mix. So I'm gonna grab this, put it on my full mix. Okay, so here's the full mix. Uh, let's start with bypass, and then this is turned all the way down, and the bass is off. And I'm gonna start playing the mix, and I'm gonna mess with it, and let's see uh, what it feels like. Ready to shake the whole earth Other days I feel so riddled with sin Crippled by my own decisions Help me God Okay, so with obviously when you run anything on a full mix, you are gonna have to go with very, very subtle. Uh, you can't just go with drastic changes because you're processing the entire mix. I would say the bass, absolutely love that feature. I loved what it did to the full mix. It, it felt a little bit beefier and had a punch to it. Um, I had this, so this is like minimum, which is not much happening. Uh, I literally had it like two clicks up to one and I did like it there. Anything past that, I didn't. Anything past that, it felt that drums and bass sounded great. Uh, the vocals in the quiet moments felt a little harsher and the guitar and the pianos felt a little harsher as well, which is kind of similar to what we found out when we were uh, doing it. So for example, um, I would pro for, if I would use this unit on this song, what I would do is I would go to the drum bus and I would print that unit uh, with more processing like what we did earlier, maybe at like four or five, and print that. And then I would not do it on any guitars or keys. I liked it on the bass, I would put it on the bass and I would not add stereo imaging to the bass, I would just add the bass lift on and then print that. And then I would take that unit on my mix bus and I would run it with just a hair of a punch for the whole mix uh, for stereo widening just a little bit, just super, super subtle. One thing uh, you want to be very, very careful, because uh, I've seen this with, mi with many mixes that I've received, you want to make sure that the entire mix is in phase and uh, your phase correlation is not in the negative the whole time, especially when you start to get into using stereo image or plugins or hardware, um, you can phase your mix real bad. So make sure you, uh, your mix is in positive correlation, mix correlation, phase correlation, as well as listen to your mix in mono. Um, so I have like on my unit over there, I can uh, select mono and I can select here when everything, does, is it being canceled? Um, is my mix way too wide? Um, or, or my mix is narrow enough where I have space to widen uh, my mix a little bit. So um, I hope this review is uh, helpful. I believe uh, this unit goes for about four or 500 bucks right now. Um, she's not a bad price for what it did. I really liked what it did. Um, can it be replicated with a plugin? I would say yes, for sure. Uh, but in my experience so far, because I have also the stereo imager from the Fusion, 
analog stereo imagers uh, are significantly better than plug-in stereo imagers. And it doesn't feel too phasey as, I don't know, that's kind of my personal opinion. I, I would trust more to widen an image using an analog unit than a plug-in, and I'd feel safer to do it that way. Uh, for the price point, I think it's great. I would never track through it. I would just use it for bus processing or mix processing like what we did uh, right now. Uh, I'm going to test it with more stuff, and I might do a second video about it was after I kind of spent some more time. Those are my initial thoughts about it. I hope this is uh, helpful for you and helpful if you're looking at this unit or any uh, stereo imaging units that you're looking for. And uh, if you like this video, make sure to subscribe. If you have any questions, make sure you put them in the comment below. I also do a lot of one-on-one -on -one sessions with studios that need help with their setup or routing or uh, that kind of stuff. So make sure you email me. My email is in the comments below or in the description. And uh, I will see you guys at the next video.